Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. Relationships are never easy. There's always challenges that come up with them. Couples therapy can be so beneficial in moving a relationship forward. Many times it's something that a lot of couples wait on, but that's not the right way to go. We're going to talk about couples therapy today. Even before we get to that, we're going to pick up from where we left off last week with emotional learning with a uh, great psychotherapist, Dr. Barry Pilsen is back with us. Hey, Barry, how are you? Uh, doing well, Steve. Thanks for uh, having me back uh, for our second session and uh, we can get started. Uh, you know, ba basically I wanted to talk about uh, psychotherapy in general and then have a few topics uh, later on, talk a little bit more about uh, couple therapy, but I want to talk about uh, in the in the series, anxiety and depression and addiction and uh, some issues around trauma too, okay? So to give uh, folks a good framework for understanding what psychotherapy actually does and how it can be helpful as well. Well, it is the effective change vehicle for emotional learning. And that's what we talked about last time we got together. Um, what is emotional learning? Let's go back there just for a sec, kind of reset that. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, that was one of the things I was trying to make the point of last week is is that if psychotherapy is used as a vehicle for change, and I was also trying to make the point that there's lots of different vehicles for change. Psychotherapy is not the only one, believe me. Um, but that it needs to include emotional learning. Actually, that's what it's best at, is trying to integrate uh, our emotions with our behaviors and our feelings because it's really our emotions that that drive us. Uh, first of all, they're uh, generally come out of the uh, more primitive part of the brain, and uh, they're really our appetites, our our feelings, our uh, desires, our motivations uh, really come uh, from our uh, emotions. If not, we would be. We kind of characterize this culturally anyway. We would be zombies. We would be robots. We would just be, you know, what comes in and goes out. And uh, that's not who we are, uh, despite sometimes trying to achieve that in our own crazy ways. But we are very emotional creatures that want, that seek, that strive, that that develop. And of course, that's the good story. It's it's also, uh, it's not always easy, okay? So that, that, that's where our emotional learning process uh, a lot of times needs to be addressed and uh, quite frankly, you know, that's where therapy uh, pretty much excels at if it's if it's done right. Would you say that emotions are really everything governs when we eat, what we really want to eat, um, every every decision that we make? Yes. In fact, eating is a good example because it's an obvious appetite, you know, and uh, as an appetite, you know, uh, you have to make decisions about when and where and what you're going to eat. So, uh, and and then if you if you try to ignore it, that's not going to work either because over time that emotion of that appetite is going to increase more and more and dominate more and more your feelings and your thoughts. So, uh, and that's just what emotion. That, again, that's the anal analogy to what emotions do, um, and. The rest is kind of like the rest of the brain, you know, which is the cortex and the prefrontal cortex are really more uh, subservient to the emotions. They figure out how to get your needs met, to, real, to, to put it real simply. And uh, that's what we do. We, we uh, are creatures of appetite that are trying to figure out how to address those needs and wants. So to go a little further, you know, in, in terms of how psychotherapy fits into that, you know, is just to uh, have people kind of understand that, um, that there are basically three areas, if I could quickly talk about, that's, uh, those are your experiences, your cognitions, and your interpersonal relationships. That's what often, you know, uh, the, your experiences are, are kind of what the background is to the way you, you process information. And our, our experience comes from, you know, that's why in, in therapy, again, Often we'll, people will talk to you about their, their personal history, what uh, 
what are the what are significant events in your life? You know, what are your relationships with uh, your family? Uh, what are your current relationships? Uh, you know, what are your aspirations? You know, what are your uh, achievements? What are your frustrations, etc.? So we all have a personal history that uh, you know is helpful to uh, understand and to uh, you know examine. Uh, then we also have a uh, our own kind of social history, which is our history in terms of the networks of relationships that we've had over the years. Uh, and so certain uh, 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 processes are more helpful in understanding somebody's social history. You know, uh, what, uh, what were their social networks? What schools did they go to? Who was their... Uh, experiences in that particular neighborhood that they might have been raised in, uh, what generally uh, 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 what generally what networks were helpful in their growth, what were painful in their growth as well. Uh, so anyway, that's just part of it uh, in terms of understanding people. You also want to understand the greater culture of people. That's a big deal. And uh, that's only been recognized by psychotherapy probably the last 15 or 20 years was, was really the importance and the impact of, of culture uh, and how that really shapes, you know, not just your relationships, but your reality as, as well. And uh, there's a lot of emphasis, which is good, on therapists having a certain amount of cultural competence, which is you can't be an expert in every culture at, at, by any means. So, so this is important if, if you are in therapy, is uh, it, it, does the therapist kind of understand or know the cultural dynamics that you were, uh, that you live in or you were raised in? Uh, maybe you're trying to get away from, maybe you're trying to join more, et cetera. But anyway, the, the therapist doesn't have to know all about the culture either, but it's important that it's discussed in the therapy that, you know, that the client themselves, if need be, educates the therapist about the culture so that, you know, which is also, by the way, how you do good therapy, you have to be open. You have to be, you know, you have to sort of, uh, there's a philosophical kind of understanding that of not knowing, not knowing is the best approach sometimes to trying to understand people or the, or the world uh, around you. So uh, anyway, so that, 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 that's important in terms of your emotional development is, is the point. So I have um, a um I have a question yes, and sir. maybe this is a deeper one but yes. you you mentioned that much of what we do is based on our experiences. Yes. Is everything we react to, everything we every decision we make, is it ultimately based on an experience somewhere from our past? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that uh, Yes, yes, yes. I mean, it, the short answer is, is yes. And uh, what, what you want to understand, basically, what we all understand is how our present uh, experiences, you know, uh, connect to our past experiences. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's that, I mean, that's that's the general answer. You and, know, when, uh, when somebody says, I'm going to be spontaneous. <laughs> well, maybe they are. But that decision probably ultimately was based on something from a past experience right something right yeah hmm. yeah and what does it mean to you what does spontaneous mean anyway you know uh, does that mean you're going to start yelling and screaming or does it mean you know you're going to uh, take an action that is different than what you than what you usually do uh because well you want to expand your experiences see so uh anyway that that's true <laughs> Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so I want to let me let me just take two two minutes too again, and and uh, uh, just besides our experiences, uh, a helpful thing in psychotherapy uh, is to understand our cognition. So here I am talking about emotions, but uh, cognitions, which you most people have heard of, cognitive behavioral therapy, is our certain sets of beliefs that we have. Or certain, we we all develop our own, not our own, but we develop cause and effect relationships that help us navigate our way 
through the world. Um, you know, uh, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, okay? Well, yes and no, you know. <laughs> it, it does, you know, the earth rotates and uh, basically faces the sun over time, right? And then the sun disappears in your particular setting over time. Okay, you don't have to know that. What you have to know is, is that the sun rises at a certain time and goes to, and, and uh, sets at a certain time. And that is the way you navigate your way at, at, in a simple way uh, through the day, okay? So um, uh, what's interesting is that um, uh, over the years, uh, psychologists have dis discovered that there are certain ways or there are certain biases that we have to process information, okay? And that is also important a lot of times for people to, to look at is, is how are they processing information? And uh, for instance, there's a, there's, there's a uh, something called confirmation bias, which basically means that we seek out information that confirms our uh, biases or our reality. And uh, so when people start talking, this is, you know, regretfully <laughs> can often, can often uh, inform political decisions or political processes. If you ever try to talk to somebody, especially in this day and age about politics, uh, you know, what you're usually dealing with is each other's confirmatory biases. So they'll try to give you evidence of this or that, you know, uh, and that has to do with people too. They'll try to give you evidence of this or that. He, he or she is like this. He or she is like that. And then they look for for information that confirms their biases, okay? And, and often distort information in ways that confirms their biases. So again, the reason I'm going over that is because that's important in terms of uh, therapy as well, is to look at kind of these cause and effect relationships that you develop that inform how you process uh, information. And that can be challenged, you know, and it, and, and it should be challenged a lot of times, but very difficult to uh, change uh, because they're effective. They're effective a lot of times in our adaptation. What's so, interesting, uh, it seems like yeah. we create our internal filters for processing information. Exactly, exactly. And sometimes those are skewed or off right. uh, in, in general. And it looks like therapy helps us kind of re redefine what those filters are. Right. And, and uh, sometimes, but, but a lot of times they're effective. They get us through the day. They get us, uh, you know, they, they get us through um, our challenges. So I'm not trying to say that they're right or wrong. They just sure. are. You know? but, uh, but, but is it reasonable to say that sometimes the way our filters are set up based on, you know, bias and things like that. Maybe it's not supporting us in the best way. That's right. That's right. And that's usually that's when we run into some type of difficulty or crisis or, you know, something that's not working. You know, that's what people end up saying. That's just not working for me, you know, or, right. or that does work for me, you know, and we all kind of, kind of say that and we kind of judge quickly whether something is working or not. And if you break it down Time sometimes further, besides our emotions, <clears throat> there are certain ways that we have, quick ways of uh, processing information at at a, a higher, it's not a higher level, but it takes place more in the cortex in the way we put things together. And a lot of times it's effective and challenging, you know, um, what, what, you know, um, you know, in terms of gender bias, in terms of racial bias, in terms of class bias, you can go on and on, uh, and and people will come up with what they think is evidence that supports their biases, and and especially not especially, but in interpersonal relationships, you know, um, I mean, it's very easy to look for evidence that supports your biases. You know, when somebody suddenly breaks up with a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know, I mean, what do you hear? You hear about how. Not that 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 this is exact, but you might hear how terrible that they are. You know how they did this and how they did that. You know and and uh, you know how they uh, were deceitful. You can go on and on. 
Sure. But a lot of times now you're looking for evidence that supports what you're doing. So you know what's happened. Interesting. And that's yeah. where the that's where the bias comes from. You know, it you're yeah. looking for the evidence to back up what's going on in front of you. Right, exactly. So you'll mm. you'll process information in that way, you know. And it's a challenge for anybody, whether they're in therapy or not, is to say, wait a minute, uh, here, let me have a different viewpoint about this. What if, what if I take this evidence that I think is so hard and solid and, and absolutely the truth and say, maybe it's not as hard and solid or absolutely the truth as, as we, as we uh, think it is, which again, in our political atmosphere is very much the game that goes on. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, conflict or competition uh, between political parties, between political, uh, you know, uh, opponents, uh, etc. And then, of course, we all jump into that in our own kinds of ways. So anyway, that's a big part of, of, of what what is done uh, in terms of uh, dealing with uh, our emotions as well. Um, and our, you know, the other thing that, that brings us, and I, I guess I'm talking a little while, but that brings us into, uh, the therapy is our, our interpersonal relationships. And, and usually actually probably the main thing that brings some people into therapy is if there's been a crisis in an interpersonal relationship, either a loss or some type of, uh, you know, conflict that, uh, to somebody that, that we're close to. And, uh, you know, and we feel it, you know, that's, that's the emotion. What do we feel? We feel sad. We feel angry. We start, uh, you know, we may be, uh, do some self-defeating behaviors. Uh, we get aggressive. We could get aggressive. We get fearful. See, all those are emotions that, that are related to the uh, change in an interpersonal relationship. So it's real important also, and therapy can be helpful for that, for how do you navigate and how do you uh, address your interpersonal relationships? So uh, I know I'm talking, but what, what I'm saying is, is, is that interpersonal relationships are cognitive distortions, our personal history. Those are the larger subjects of a psychotherapy pro process that looks to address your emotions in ways that can help you change, because that's what it's about. It's about changing and doing things differently. That's what change really means is doing things differently. Well, with the time we have less, we're talking about interpersonal relationships. Yes. Um, maybe we should say go over to couples therapy. At this okay. Point. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what we, we don't have that much time. I know. Um, but we're going to continue with this next week. <laughs> gotcha. That's yeah. Right. We were, we're not going to be uh, able to. Just... Yeah. You could do it. We'll all. Anyway. Um, so, you know, couple therapy is, is, is often brings people into uh, psychotherapy as well. Okay. Just as I'm talking about in terms of conflict, in terms of uh, hurt, in terms of anger. I mean, you want to talk about emotions, you know, uh, jump into uh, somebody's couple relationship and uh, they're flying all over the place. Okay. Uh, in fact, um, Again, over the last 20, 30 years, we've learned a, a bit about couple therapy, too. The, the, just to give you a little background, the, the old-fashioned way of dealing with couples was to sort of make it like a behavioral contract, you know. Well, the problem is, is, you know, it's unfair, and I do this, and you do that, and, and uh, we need to figure out a contract so that everybody is, is, uh, feels fair and feels happy. Kind of like, here's a budget for our money. You, know, you, you spend it on this, you spend it on that, and everything goes well, I don't know. I don't know how many people follow budgets, but I think it's very rare, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it almost you know, seems in, in a couple in a couple way. Okay, a hundred percent. And it almost seems that you know you're dealing with emotions, and now you're trying to make this yes. ironclad contract, which is right. You no, know, definitive, but it's it's really not that. It really no, it's really work. not. And and so what 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 studies showed over time is how poor couple therapy really had, poor outcomes of couple therapy had, that, okay? And, 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 you know, and I would submit that that's because they were trying to develop contracts between people that obviated that, that uh, you know, put aside people's emotions. 
So it's kind of like, well, don't get upset about that. We're trying to come to something fair. Well, wait a minute, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, you know what it seems like, Barry? It seems like a um, uh, mediation session as opposed yes. to therapy. Yes. And you know what, Steve? <laughs> mediation works very poorly with couples as well. You know, uh, Even in, you know, when, and just a, a note on that, I know we're at the end, but, uh, you know, when people are, one of the, the ideas of uh, trying to help people that were going through divorce was to do mediation services, you know, between the couples. Well, sounds good. Let's mediate. Let's let's not cause any more problems. <clears throat> they work very poorly too. Okay, why? It's not it's not that there's an objective standard, but people always not always, but generally feel that it's unfair, so yep. or that the mediator is not understanding you know, they're real difficulties, okay? So the battles go on, on, on. And uh, actually, we've got one of the things that's developed around that is that uh, instead of uh, couples maybe fighting each other over their behavior, they then switch to starting to fight over their children. And that becomes the target of conflict a lot of times. And part of that is, is, is <clears throat> that the courts sort of take the position that the the uh, whatever's mediated needs to be in the child's best interest, which is fine, except that becomes the vehicle for conflict. All right, and so we have a lot of times unwittingly children are caught in. Again, <clears throat> it's the emotional dynamics that are really behind all that. Yeah, uh, it's a great way you look at that because it mediation can work if both parties are somewhat on the same page. Right. I, it's not the magic bullet. It's not. <clears throat> now, in business, you know, because of certain dynamics, you know, you may, may be forced into mediation, which happens just because, you know, it's better than, it's really probably better than going through a trial or some other highly conf conflictual process. That's what it really right. is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how does that, you know, we, like literally a minute left, how would you okay. define couples therapy? We're going to continue okay. this, but if you, We're going to continue a, a, you this, know, right. a brief, a brief definition of how couples therapy can be impactful, how would you define it? Well, the, 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 the switch is, is how do we become a cooperative couple? Okay. How do we become a partnership that's cooperative? Not that we have to agree not that we have to uh, all see, see things that way, but how do we create space where we can have multiple viewpoints, where we don't have to uh, necessarily, uh, you know, be on the same page, but we can also articulate how the other person, what, what page the other person is on, okay? And then how do you learn to communicate through that? That's the issue is how can you communicate through your multiple viewpoints and with the idea though and this is where we we fit together is we want to be cooperative because that way we get to the goals that we probably both have in life okay all right and and that's the key how do we have the same dream or the same goals in general barry would you say in closing here today that couples therapy really can't work unless each individual does their own therapy? Well, generally, yes. Generally, yes. I'll tell you one, one thing is each individual has to have a sense of their own self differentiated from the other, okay? And, and not just project onto the other. It's when they're projecting onto the other that the difficulties really uh, arise. Now, some people come in to couple therapy with that, but individual therapy or some experiences with that often precede or should precede couple therapy. I love this. We've made it, I feel, with greatly your help, clear what's going okay. on here. And yeah. uh, definitely how our experiences, that was my, my, my aha moment here, how our experiences really dictate what we do in life. It's, it's, I don't want to say we're on autopilot, but for a large degree, it seems like what we do is based on our past. And therefore, you need to confront your past. You need to figure that out. Right. It's the answer. Yes, for you're making a very good point. 
I'm sorry. You are making a very good point. We are on autopilot most of the time, you know. And it takes energy to get out of autopilot to make changes, okay? Absolutely. Um, Barry, how do we find you? How do we connect with you? If somebody's looking for therapy, looking for insight, how do, how do we find you? Yeah, I'm, uh, I have a website, uh, barrypilsonphd.com. And if you want to contact me, that's fine. Uh, more than that, I just hope you uh, can look at some of these podcasts and get a better understanding of uh, how psychotherapy can be helpful in certain areas of people's lives. It's not the be all, the end all, though. That's the other point I'm trying to make. Learned a lot today. Very impactful. And you have a wonderful way, Barry, of explaining something so it's crystal clear. You really do. Um, okay. and, and a lot of these things I've wondered about, and uh, you've confirmed a lot of them. Definitely looking forward to digging back into a uh, couples therapy next time we get together. Okay. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you. Steve. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.